Hi, Randy, K7AGE, part two of building the new ham shack. In the previous video, part one, you uh, heard about my planning of the ham shack, what I was going to be doing. Um, I mounted the, I put the shelves together, moved the shelves in, put the radios on the shelves, hooked up the power supplies, and hooked up the two computers. Well, the next step is that I want to start hearing some things and maybe working some stations. So I need to work on the antenna. So before I talk about antennas, I'm going to talk about what is typically a very hot topic in many ham radio discussions, and that's about grounding. What do you do for your station? And there's all sorts of various thoughts about this, and it just all kind of gets grouped into grounding. There's the AC safety grounding through the third pin of, of your wiring. There's um, RF grounding, which may be needed for some antennas and to reduce the uh, RF coming back into your shack. And there's lightning protection. Um, so there's a lot of things to consider about grounding. I'm not going to get into any of that. In fact, I'm not even going to put any grounding in this station unless I have to, because it's not very convenient here where the way the room is and how we'd have to get outside. It would be a long cable. And so I'm going to go without it and see what happens. So that's it about grounding. <laughs> we uh, just leave it at that and see what happens. Okay, so on to the antennas. Where we're at here in this rental house, it's um, I'm kind of surrounded by some other non-residential buildings and I'm kind of an island in this piece of property. So I really don't have a lot of things I can work with. But what I have is a uh, like a short telephone pole that's used to hold up a uh, security light. And so I'm going to hook my antenna on one end of that and then string it out across the top of the house, or part of the lower part of the house, off to another utility pole. And I'm going to, I won't be near the wires and I won't be up near the top. So eh, it's only a temporary thing, probably not the smartest thing to do. But... I'm going to try that first and see how it works out. The antenna I'm going to use is a NFED antenna. I bought this before I left Grass Valley and I had this up for a while and was using it. So I thought I would try it out here as well. It's all pre-made and uh, we'll hang it up and see what happens. I can always change things out later. I have maybe some other ideas for the future. So what I have is a PAR NFED antenna. It's about 66 feet long and it's a quad band. It covers 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters, and it's capable of 200 watts. So that's what I'm going to put up, hang it from the pole, and stretch it out across the house. One of the challenges I had was how to get the rope up to the top of the pole without a ladder or a bucket truck. And what I used was uh, for camping, I have this long fiberglass uh, wonder pole, and it extends actually higher than the wood pole out by the side of the house here. So I thought if I uh, have my rope up at the top of that plastic pole, I can just reach up over there and set it down over the hook that's holding up the uh, power cable, and I can have my line at the top of that pole to be used to pull up the antenna. And that worked out really easy. So the antenna is going to stretch across the back porch of the house, which does have a metal roof, which is not ideal, but it's what I have to work with. And, you know, we all don't live on uh, huge properties and big antenna farms. So sometimes we have to make do with what we have. And I'm going to string it across there and tie it to um, basically as far up as I can reach on this other utility pole. You know, you really shouldn't get near power lines, but I'll be away from it and I'm not going to be up near the top or anything like that. So... If it doesn't work, I can try something else, but that's what we're going to start with. So the other item to deal with is how to get the cables into the house. So I have a landlord that's willing to uh, work with me here about with my ham radio. He says I can do things as long as I don't put stuff, you know, drill holes in the roof. And uh, he has a contractor friend, so I met with him about it, the idea of bringing the cables into the house and what we've done in this room that's just outside the ham shack up high underneath an eave I've drilled a hole through from the inside to the outside then use a hole saw to cut a cut a larger hole so I could pass a piece of PVC piping through and then I caulked it up 
and it's tilted down so the rain and the weather won't get in. So that's how the cables are coming into the house. Okay, I'm back in the ham shack and now it's time to check the antenna. The way I'm going to check that is with the MFJ antenna analyzer that I have. I'm not going to go through all the operation of it. I've covered that on one of my other YouTube videos that you can see on my channel. I'm going to record the data that I measure with the MFJ analyzer in a notebook. It's a good thing to establish yourself a notebook for your station where you can keep track of like antenna performance data, which your SWR uh, measurements are, maybe connector pinouts for any custom cables, uh, COM ports for your computer, uh, maybe settings for the radio. It's nice to record that in a notebook so if you have concerns at a later point in time you can go back and compare what it was originally. So to record the SWR measurements I'm going to use a single page. I'm going to make four band graphs, one for 40, 20, 15, and 10 and write the frequencies across the bottom and some SWR values up the side and I'm going to use the MFJ to measure multiple points across the band and then record the data and I have myself a simple little graph that I can go back and look at later to see how the antenna is performing. Okay I've got all my data now recorded in my ham station engineering notebook and I'm fairly pleased with the results. On 40 meters you can see it went from about 1.5 up to 1.8 between the band edges. 20 meters it went from about 1.4 to 1.8, that'll certainly work fine. Um, 15 meters, I'm not sure why, but it was about 1.2 across the, the entire band. Maybe that's because 40 meter and 15 meters can quite often use the same antenna because of the harmonic relationship. Um, and 10 meters, it went from about 1.5 up to about 2.3. So. Yeah, it's a little high in 10 way out at the end here, but don't forget 10 is a much wider band than the rest. So anyway, I'm quite pleased. You know, I know that the radio will work with this and if I get near the band edges, I can always press the tune button and let the antenna tuner in the radio match the antenna. Okay, well that wraps up for this video. Um, at least I got my antenna up. You saw how I put that up. It's uh, again a par and fed quad for 40, 20, 15, and 10. Uh, I can use it across all the bands without a tuner, so that's really handy. And I just wish I could get it up higher. But we'll have to get on the air and make some contacts and see how it does. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we'll be hooking up the mixer. So stay tuned, 73. match it back in for for the transmitter a little tricky getting the uh, I don't know how well I'll get out but that's that's blah 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 blah